Good morning, church. I hope today you are ready to hear from God. You are ready to encounter God today. I want to tell you our worship team are anointed. Our worship team are ready to bring something fresh. Our production team has everything sorted. Everything is ready for us to prepare ourselves for a move of God. There is one thing left. Is your heart ready? Is your heart ready to worship God? And so I want to pray with you and for you as we get into a place of encounter. Father, we come before you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that because of Jesus, we're qualified to come in to your presence today. And so, Father, right now, I thank you, God, that you're moving on every single person watching this. I thank you, Lord, that what was a mountain, what was a barrier, what was a wall, that as they bring a shout of praise that every wall will fall. Every mountain will be moved into the sea at the name of Jesus. Church, I want to tell you there is no higher name than the name of Jesus. And as you lift him up, he will make your paths straight. Come on, church. Let's worship him.
challenge that we cannot do it without you, Lord. Settle here. Settle here. Settle
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory
thank you that when you're in the house, you speak to us. You speak and the waves obey. You command every trouble to sit and be still. So Lord, we ask that you speak this morning. Speak to us, speak to us, Lord. Speak to us, speak to us. Speak to us, speak to us. Speak to us, speak to us. such a presence of God in the room right now. There's such an anointing right here. Just in worship, I was reminded of the Psalmist David who said, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. We've got to take that passage and pull it through the cross. What was David saying? He was saying, who can encounter the presence of God? His presence is made available. See, Jesus has already made you clean, clean hands. But today, it's about the pure, purity of our heart. If you really are hungry for God, if you're really hungering for a counter with the presence of God, you don't have to have everything right. He'll make you right. What God's asking you today, would you have a pure heart before Him? A pure heart is an honest heart. You know, you can be saying to everyone, you know what, I'm fine, I'm good, everything. And that's fine. That's part of your faith declaration. But when you come before the Father, I want to tell you there is a Father in heaven who says it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be real. It's okay to be raw with God. Right now in this moment, where are you at in your heart? Can you lay aside the masks? Can you lay aside the burdens and come before the Father and say, Lord, I may not have it all right. I may be feeling the emotional weight of this season, but God, in this moment, I'm hungering for you. And as you declare that right now, I believe breakthrough is coming into your home. Breakthrough is coming into your car, into your office. Can you feel the presence of God where you are? There's a holy moment. You can have a holy moment wherever you're watching this today. When the presence of God shows up, every care, every burden, every worry is dissolved, is moved away, and there's a place of encounter. Father, right now, I thank you that in our city, God, we are not forsaken. But God, you are moving. I thank you, Lord, that churches 
across our city and our nation will meet in person again, God. And Father, we thank you in advance for the mighty harvest, for the revival, for the presence of God that's going to flow through our city, flow through our country, flow through our homes, flow through our offices, through our schools, through our universities. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. And so today, we can smile in despite of everything around us. We can smile in faith knowing that our God is going to come through. Our God is making a way. Our God is bringing revival. And so, Father, right now, in sincerity and purity of heart, we thank you for encountering you today. And Lord, we carry this encounter into the traffic on Monday, into our workplace on Monday, into our meeting on Tuesday, and into the week ahead in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, and amen. Well, get ready, because we are about to get a word and a download from heaven today. Hey church, so glad that you've tuned in today. Well, it's August and I know that August is an awkward month. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold, you know, but we know that spring is coming. I would encourage you, your spring season is coming. You may be sitting right now uncertain, but listen, we know by the calendar that spring brings a newness and a freshness. And I'm praying that for your life. In this season, it's time to be full of faith, come on, and full of hope. Why? Because without hope, our faith has no substance because faith is the things hopeful. Faith is the substance of things hopeful. Can I get an amen today? I remember a few years ago working in the corporate environment, and many years ago, we were putting together a a proposal for a company in order uh, to get new business. And in that moment, we had decided, listen, we're going to have to work late. The deadline was due the next morning, 9 a.m. And so there we were putting together this proposal. And it had gone into the evening. And it was also like the month of August. We'd had the heaters on in the room. Some people had ordered different takeaway. And uh, I remember getting up in that room and going out to the bathroom. And I went for a walk. And I came back into that room and I suddenly realized how that environment was terrible. It was hot. It was stuffy. There were all sorts of smells from the different takeaways and everything else. And I said to everyone in that moment, come on, guys, we need to get up. We need to shake some things off right now. We need to get all the windows open. We need to get some fresh air. Some fresh air will bring some fresh thinking. And it's amazing that we'd been working for so many hours. But in the the next hour, we were able to put everything together in that proposal. Why? Because we opened up. We made some space for something fresh and something new. I know in this season during lockdown, maybe you've been working from home, maybe you're working in a confined space, how everything can feel stagnant, everything can feel uh, confined, but I wanna tell you that is not what God wants for you. If you in this season will activate your faith, will take a step of faith, I wanna tell you God is gonna fling open the doors of heaven, the windows of heaven, And there will be a freshness, fresh thinking, fresh opportunity, fresh blessing. How do I know this? Because Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says that when you bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, I, God, will open up what? The windows of heaven. Listen, if there's a window you want opened on your life, let it be the windows of heaven. There is no lack in heaven. Come on. There is no discouragement in heaven. There is hope hope, there is opportunity, there is freshness, there is prosperity. If there's any window on my life that I want open, it's the windows of heaven. Come on. And so God says in this moment that I will pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Maybe in August, maybe as we approach the end of the month, you're feeling stagnant. 
You're feeling confined. You're feeling like heaven is being closed. I want to ask you today to do the things you did at first. Be faithful in your giving. Be faithful in giving to God's purposes. Why? Because in that moment, when you take a step of faith, God is going to open up those windows and what you felt was confined will now have a new flow, a new breath of life, a new wind of opportunity over you, your family, and your business in Jesus' name. And so today, I want to pray a blessing over you as we approach the end of the month of August. Father, I thank you, Lord, that right now as people are faithful in their giving, as they're faithful with their tithe, that, Lord, you will open up the floodgates of heaven. Lord, you will open up the windows over their lives. And I thank you, Lord, in faith right now for the freshness of this new season, the freshness of new opportunities, new ways of thinking, new ingenuity in the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? so glad that you could join us online today. We hope you have joined us full of faith and full of hope. We know that you are not just here by coincidence, but you are here by providence. I'm standing here with the beautiful Giovanni and we are in the Lone Hill in an awesome restaurant called Dino's. I mean, man, this place is where it's at. It's got such an awesome Italian vibe. The food is good. When you've got a gap in your life, why don't you make your way on over here? It is such a vibe. Now, I know we are on lockdown level three adjusted, but that doesn't mean we can't be together online as a family. We want to encourage you to make sure you head on over to one of our online platforms, either Facebook or on YouTube, so that you can have the real church experience. That's right, everywhere. Hey, church, and welcome. We are so glad that you've decided to join us this weekend. Now, I have some exciting news for you. Our Vista High Club is back in Ooh. action. So get off those hiking boots and stretch those muscles because we are meeting on Saturday, the 28th of August. Now, Vista High Club is a high club that meets once a month on a Saturday. We get to go to some amazing locations in our city and we get to spend time together as a church. Now this is a great opportunity for you to bring along someone that wouldn't usually come to church. This is a great chance for them to meet our family and spend the day with us. So what are you waiting for? Save the date, grab your mate, and we'll see you there. <laughs> we'll definitely see you there. Now church, we have an awesome ongoing initiative called the Joseph Project. Now this is a project in which we um, put together food parcels and bless those less fortunate in our community. I know what you're thinking at this moment, how can I help? I'm so glad you asked. I um, want to encourage you um, to prayerfully consider putting together some food, uh, a food parcel or maybe even more than one. Um, it's 250 rand to put together a food parcel and again it's to bless the families in our community. And um, our banking details are on the screens right now. Uh, when you make your uh, payment, remember to include the reference, Joseph Project, and bless a family this winter. Amen. That's right, everywhere. We also wanted to let you know about our financial freedom course. Now, this is a 10-week course that starts on Tuesday, the 7th of September. The cost is only 250 Rand per person, and you receive these amazing workbooks. These include biblical teachings on how you can excel at your finances. All you have to do to get more information is email sophie at citylifechurch.co.za and she will get back to you with more information. Now, I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to get into the Word today. Pastor Bianca has a powerful sermon in season for all of us. So what are you waiting for? Grab your Bibles, grab your notebooks, grab a pen, grab, grab your mates, mates, again, and join <laughs> us online. We are so ready for you and have, have a, a super, super Sunday, Sunday everyone.
Well, it is an absolute honor to be with you online today. And I have no doubt that the same anointing that is right here in this room is finding you wherever you are, whether you are in your home, whether you're in your car, whether you're watching at work, it doesn't matter where you are. I really get a sense today that God has some work to do. And He is so excited to be with you in your space today. You know, there is no one like our God. God. He is holy. He is awesome. He is greatly to be praised. Come on. He is God Almighty. He is unmatched in His power and He is faithful with His promises. And one of my favourite things about God is that He is God our Father. And I really want to tell some people today, you may not know this, but God could not possibly love you more than He already does. He loves you so much. The Bible says it's immeasurable. You couldn't possibly measure it. You couldn't contain it. You couldn't even describe it. You are the apple of His eye. You are chosen by Him and He loves you more than anything. And so today there really is nothing that you cannot bring to Him that is too big, that is too hard. Your Father can take it and He wants to take it and He wants to do great things in your life. And I'm so excited for today's Word. You see, while I was penning my sermon, (laughs) there was a howling wind outside. We even had a sandstorm. Pastor Nick was like, there's a sandstorm. It was so cool and so dramatic and so exciting because I really felt God reminding me in that moment that the wind represents the Spirit of God. The word, the Hebrew word ruach, I love it, ruach. It means wind, breath, and Spirit. And in Genesis 1 verse 2, Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God hovered over the earth and guess what He did? He breathed life into desolate places. He breathed life into being. And today I really believe that God wants to breathe life into some of your desolate and dry places today. God wants to breathe life into your circumstance. God wants to encounter you in your dry place and He wants to move you to your destined place. That's who He is right now. Now you may be facing some financial troubles. You may be facing troubles with relationship or in your marriage. Maybe you've got the heaviness of depression or or maybe you just can't shake that, that addiction. Maybe you have fear and anxiety. Maybe you are living in the land of hope hopelessness and I am so sorry that you have found yourself in that dry place today. Oh my heart breaks for you that you have found yourself there but whatever it looks like for you you need to know that God wants His people back. You know God wants you back on track full of life, full of hope, full of faith, full of His Word, full of His goodness, full of His promise. And so you need to know that with every disappointment is a divine appointment for God to do a miracle in your life. And so that means today that we are gonna speak some life over some dry bones. Sons and daughters are gonna be coming home today. He's gonna transform some hard hearts in this place. And online today, He is gonna breathe some new life. Ruach Elohim, Spirit of God, would you breathe life into these desolate places now, Lord. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Right now, wherever you are, just say hope and future. Oh, that's what Jeremiah 29, 11 is gonna tell you about God's heart towards you in this place. And so let's pray. Lord Jesus, 
Right now, we wanna give you all the glory, all the honour and all the praise that is due your name. Lord, we thank you that your Word brings life. It is life changing and it is powerful. So right now, Lord, we come with expectant hearts and we thank You that the Word that goes out today would not return to You void, but instead it would accomplish everything that You have designed it to accomplish on our behalf. And so right now, Lord, would You open our eyes to see, would You open our ears that we would hear from You today, God? Would You ready our hearts that every word You speak into our souls would rest there and would change us and transform us into everything that You have planned for us today. Amen. Well, today I have called my message, Dried Up Dreams. Dried Up Dreams. There isn't a person in the world that hasn't experienced a moment in their life where they have had a dried up dream. And if you're stuck in a dry place today, it is so important that you understand what it is that got you there. So I want to start with a quick little story. When I was young and at school, it was just like yesterday, right? <laughs> Come on. When I was much, much younger, we used to play a game on the school field. Some of you will know it. It was called Stingers, right? And a whole lot of you would be on the field. This is how we played it. And somebody would have a hard ball and you, they would throw it at you, at the crowd, and you had to run from it, right? <laughs> And sometimes you manage to dodge it, and other times the ball hits you. And let me tell you that when that ball hits you, it stung so bad. <laughs> you collapsed on the floor, but most importantly, you are out of the game at that point. Now, I, I don't know what was worse. I don't know if the sting of the hit that came unexpectedly was worse than the fact that you were stung out. You were out of the game. But the truth is that sometimes life is going to throw you a hard ball and it is going to leave you out of the game. It's going to leave you stinging and in the dust and not knowing what just happened here. And that is life. Life is going to do that. And the truth is, we're all going to experience it. But I want you to know that God is still God. He is still in control. He is still the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the most powerful, almighty God that ever was, that is, and will ever be. Amen. And so you might be stirred up by the anxiety today, <laughs> but I want you to know that there isn't a crazy enough storm that Jesus can't calm. Come on, there isn't one crazy storm that He can't just go, shh, come on, breath of God. I love Psalm 119 verse 105. It says that the Word is a lamp unto my feet and a path, a light on my path. The Word brings you light. It shows you the way. You never have to do this alone. All you have to do is pick up the Word of God. It will never disappoint. That's how good the Word of God is. And so when we read the Word of God, we see many men and women in the history of the Bible who have experienced the dry place, who have had their dried up dreams frazzle in front of them. And they've watched God resurrect those dreams. And so today, I want to reference a portion of Scripture in 2 Kings 24. And I'm going to let you read that for homework today. But I'm going to give you a quick summary of what happens in the story. We read of an account of one of the greatest crises that Israel or Jerusalem has ever experienced. What happens is there's a series of pivotal events in the history of Israel that cause Jerusalem and its temple to crumble to the ground into nothing. The ruler of the day in Babylon is King Nebuchadnezzar. You've heard of him. He's got a cool name. But let me tell you, that's the only thing that's cool about him because he's pretty rough. He takes what he wants. He walks around de demanding things from people. He's a tyrant. The Bible says he got whatever he wanted. People feared him. 
And the thing about King Nebuchadnezzar was that he wanted Jerusalem and all of the good things that came out of it. So what he chose to do was he took all the best of the best. The Bible says he took 10,000 of their best and their bravest people And he moved them to Babylon in exile and he made them use all their gifts and all their talents and all their specialties for his purposes, leaving Jerusalem with only the weak and the poor. It's no wonder that there was no resource to rebuild Jerusalem in that time. It was a sad time for God's chosen people. They had been stripped of their promised land. They had felt cut off from God and they were spiritually in a very dry place. Now, I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up wherever you are. You're most likely sitting next to your family, but maybe some of that is resonating with you today. When we read of the same account in the book of Ezekiel, we start to see God's heart towards His people And it is so powerful. He's constantly warning them, would you just listen? Would you turn from your ways? Come on, turn, do what I ask. But they don't listen. And now they are paying the price. And so Ezekiel, we get introduced to Ezekiel. And he is a pious priest and an inspired prophet. He's not just a priest, he's a prophet and he loves God. He's devoted to God and even though he is also in exile, along with all the talented people of Jerusalem, he remains faithful to God. He keeps his eyes on God. He keeps his devotion towards God. He knew that Jerusalem was not just a great place because it had awesome mountains and beautiful valleys. It was a great place because once those people had great faith, that's what made it great. And he knew that it wasn't the beautiful palaces that made the place amazing. It was the amazing prayers of the powerful people that made it amazing. And so when their faith and their prayers were gone and forgotten, their fields and their palaces were doomed. And so Ezekiel's heart's cry was he wanted the people to soften their hearts towards God again, to love God again, to choose God again. And so God wants to use Ezekiel He wants him to prophesy. He wants him to soften the hearts of his people by speaking his word right into where they find themselves. And so we pick up our story in Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse one. And I love reading this because it's as though I have opened the pages of Ezekiel's diary. Listen to what he says. The hand of the Lord was on me. And he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very, very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make you, I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together bone to bone. And I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds, come breath and breathe into these slains that they may live. 
And so I prophesied just as He had commanded me and breath entered them. And they came to life and they stood up on their feet, a vast army, a vast army. It's like He's going, wow. Then He said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We've been cut off. Therefore, prophesy to them and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Wow. What a vision. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying hard in my quiet time to say, God, I've got my diary out. I want to see some bones coming to life. <laughs> so Ezekiel walked closely with God. And I love this because he had no restrictions on God. He placed no restrictions. In fact, he says, God took a hold of him. And the Bible says, God, had, God was on him. The hand of the Lord was on him. He carried the presence of God. But because the people had forgotten God, Babylon had taken hold of them. And I really want to ask you today, right out of the gates, what has taken a hold of you today that is keeping you in your dry place? Because they missed the promises of God as long as Babylon had them. Sometimes we place a restriction on God's access to us and we start to miss out on God's promises for us. You see in the vision, I love it. <laughs> you gotta read it slowly. God takes Ezekiel to a valley filled with dry bones scattered everywhere. And the Bible says he took him up and down. He took him up and down. God led Ezekiel up and down the valley so that he could take a good, long look at the state of the bones. He could see they were not just bones, they were dry bones. And I love that Ezekiel, he doesn't freak out. I don't know about you, if I saw a valley of dry bones, there could have been a different reaction from me. He doesn't freak out. He considers what God is showing him. He pauses and he looks and he makes a mental note of what is going on around him. Now, I don't know about you, but I so often find myself freaking out about stuff. I don't stop and ask God, what are you saying in this moment? What are you showing me in this time? Now, you can't get more dead than a dry bone. <laughs> you know, they're very dry. And so curiously, God asks Ezekiel, it feels like a trick question, can these bones live? Ezekiel knows that in the natural, those bones are dead and gone. They are dry and dusted, done and dusted. But he also knows that he is in the presence of Almighty God. He is in the presence of the most powerful God. And so I love that he doesn't doubt God's ability or God's power, he says, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. What a great answer. <laughs> we learn from Ezekiel that even when we are faced with impossibility, it's our faith that can leave the question of possibility in the hands of God. That's what your faith does. When you have faith, it doesn't matter what is impossible ahead of you, you're leaving what is possible in the hands of God. And I love that God asks Ezekiel a question that he already knows the answer to. He already knows the answer to the question. Sometimes God asks you questions you already know the answer to because He wants to see if you have enough faith to act on what you know. And so then God tells Ezekiel, to call those things that are not as if they were, to tell those bones to live again. 
I love that. God not only um, uh, commands Ezekiel to speak his word, but he empowers him with what to prophesy. He gives him the words to say into that situation, to speak life. You need to know that the Word of God empowers you to speak life over every one of your circumstances. I am so grateful for people like Ezekiel who teach us what it is to have faith and to obey God in our faith. And so you see Ezekiel, he doesn't say what he felt in the time. Well, God, I feel that. He doesn't say that. All he does is say exactly what God asks him to say. And so in verse 7, he prophesies as he was commanded. But watch this now. Just listen to this. As I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones started to shake, and they started to come together bone to bone as Ezekiel opens his mouth. As he opens his mouth, he starts to hear the work of God, the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God over his circumstance. He starts to hear a rumbling sound. He starts to see the dust. He starts to see the bones shake. He starts to see them coming together, bone to bone. Next thing you know, the bones have tendons, skin and flesh. My goodness, Can you imagine? (laughs) There you're standing looking at dry bones. Next thing, they're coming alive in front of your very eyes. Ezekiel saw it first. Step aside the mummy. I love it. (laughs) But the Bible says that even though the bones had flesh and skin on them, they did not have breath. Sometimes you have to keep speaking. You might not see what you need to see right now. And God's saying, okay, cool. Could you get a little more specific? So guess what he says? (laughs) He says that what I want you to do is I want you to speak to the breath. You've done speaking to the bones. You've done speaking to the bones. Now I want you to speak to the breath. And I need you to know today a very, very key thing that mechanical religion is insufficient. What I mean by that is going to church, singing one song and maybe raising your hallelujah just like that and going home is sometimes not going to be enough. It's important. It puts the skin on the bones, but you don't have breath in their lungs yet. And so God is asking you today, would you take it a little deeper? Would you go a little wider? Would you raise your hands a little higher? You can sing, but can you worship? You, you've heard my word and you read my word, but do you know it? Can you speak it? Can you prophesy it? Can you say, come breath? You need to have faith and hope in God Almighty's power. Oh, it's magnificent. And that's how you address your dry place. By faith and by the power of His Word. Those two things combined. Oh, I love that God says, you tell them bones. <laughs> you say, come breath. Not, hey, are you free right now? Can you check your diary? I really need you. It's like, come breath. How awesome. The Word of God is full of commands that you can throw at your dry place. And let me tell you what happens when Ezekiel says, come breath and does everything God said. They come to life. They stood up on their feet. And the Bible says it was a vast army. They went from very dry bones to a vast army. Oh man, when the Word of God hit those bones, they could do nothing but stand up in His presence and they were a vast army. God wants some things to be resurrected in your life, to stand up, to come alive. The very dry bones were now a vast army. God Wow, He's so good at resurrecting things. If you would just speak His Word over those things. So let me just get a a bit more personal for a minute. You see, (laughs) 
God is so wanting you to win. He wants to resurrect some things going on in your life right now. You have some dried up dreams that God put in your heart, but right now you are sitting in the dust of those dreams. And the devil, he knows how powerful God is. That's why you never see him messing with God. But you, on the other hand, he'll mess with you any day of the week that you let him. And so I wanna talk to some people that have some dried up dreams that maybe you found yourself stuck in that valley of dryness. You can't get out. All you see is other scattered bones and hopelessness. You need to know that if the enemy could, he would keep you in that valley, scattered all over the place and very dry. He keeps you tired. He keeps you discouraged. He keeps you distracted. He helps work you so that you will lose your joy. He robs you of your peace. He robs you of your relationships. And very soon, you do not even have a devotion life to God. Matthew 12, 43 says, the evil one walks through dry places. He loves a dry place. (laughs) And Psalm 68, 6 says, only the rebellious dwell in a parched land. Just let that sink in for a moment. Are you dwelling in a parched land? The Bible told you who's dwelling there. The ones that are not taking God's word and adhering to it. Maybe the enemy is walking through your life right now because you found yourself stuck in that dry place. When last did you speak God's word over your life, over your marriage, over your finances? When last did you obey God's Word? You need to know an interesting fact that it takes between 40 and 50 years for a bone to dry and become brittle. How long have you sat in your dry place? How long have you let the devil walk up and down and discourage you and keep you down and keep you tired and keep your face in the dust? How long? It's time to change your attitude because your attitude changes everything. It changes the whole experience. Maybe what you are speaking over your life right now is what is keeping you in the dry place. (laughs) Self-talk. There is life and death in the power of the tongue. And guess what? Even when you speak to yourself, I believe that's a word for someone. What are you telling yourself right now? God has already blessed you with a land that He has given you. Deuteronomy 28.8. The Bible says, Jesus says in John 10.10, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. Abundance does not equal dry. God is not in the dry place. He wants you out of it. But if God gives you a word. You are responsible to trust Him with that word. So when you are going around in circles, wandering the wilderness in a dusty valley of defeat, and why are you doing that when God says you are victorious? Why are you running around chasing your tail? God has already told you who you are. You've got to believe it. If you're living your life in a wonderland, wandering around, listening to everybody but God. Along the way, you will end up in the wilderness. And I believe that sometimes God will let you wander to the dry place because He knows that when you get there, there is only one person you can call out to that will resurrect your dry bones, and that is Jesus And so sometimes He lets you wander all the way there because you're not looking at Him. You don't need Him. Matthew 11, 28 says, Jesus says, come to me, all who are burdened and weary. He says, come to me. Come to me. Stop trying to get God to come to your dry valley. Stop trying to get God to sit next to you and listen to your complaints. 
You're whining. <laughs> I know it's hard. I'm telling myself this. So hang on here. Don't expect God to come and sit with you in your issues, with your bad attitude. That's the dry place. The Bible says, Jesus says, draw near to me. Come to me. I love Jeremiah 33. God says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. <laughs> he says, call to me. Call to me. We sit there and we go, can't you see? And God's like, hang on a minute. Whoa. Let's change your tune. <laughs> My mom used to say, it's time to change your tune, girl. <laughs> All that barren, all that lost, all that dry, that's where the devil wants you to take a seat, comfortable in the dust of what was once your dream. Welcome to Babylon, people. Woo! <laughs> that's the way, uh -huh, uh -huh. he likes it. But God has other plans for you today. Hallelujah! God says in Ezekiel 37, 37 11, he says, my people... God is so jealous for you. You are His people. He loves you. And He says, now you go and prophesy to them and you say, God will put His Spirit in you. He will do it. And you will live. There's no might or maybe terms and conditions apply. You will live and you will get your land back. God wants His people back. God wants you back. And so it's time to prophesy to those dry places and start to connect the unconnected. Start to see things shifting into place. God has a promise with your name on it. And just like Joseph, what, what, he wants to repackage you and he wants to reintroduce you to every single person who said you can't, who said you won't. Oh my goodness, step out of the dust and into the dream, baby. <laughs> because God has it waiting for you. Yeah. See, God knows how dry your places are, but He also knows what He has given you to overcome. And so while we're sitting here listening to this sermon, I have no doubt that God has got you wandering up and down in the valley of your own dry place right now. Amen. And He says it's time to start saying, Come, breath. And if you don't see breath, you speak again. Stop calling what you see, things the way you see them and start to call them the way God says they should be. <laughs> right? Don't let the devil use your tongue to keep you captive, to keep you in exile, snared by the words of your own mouth. Well, I hate coming home. I hate my job. <laughs> my kids drive me crazy. I can't do this. I will never get anywhere. My life is falling apart. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> I have a word for you. Hear me now. Stop whining and start winning. Ish, pastor. Did you just say that? I did. Because I love you. And I want you to hear what's coming out your mouth. It's time to prophesy. You will live and not die. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. I am the head and not the tail. I will hold that thought captive in Jesus' name. And I will believe that I am who He says He is. Are you picking up what I am putting down right now? God can do exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever hope for or imagine. So I will put my trust in Him today. Nothing is impossible for God. Come, breath. Come, breath breath, come breath, speak life. And so three quick things. Number one, your obedience protects the promise. The devil wants you to settle in the dust. But James 4, 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Bye-bye now. <laughs> you tell the devil not today. Number two, your words propel you towards your destiny. Your words. God asked Ezekiel to speak. He didn't speak. He said, you tell the bones. You tell your circumstance. You tell the enemy. You speak. When we agree with what God says about us, nothing can stop us. And so don't forfeit what you could be because of what you can't see right now. 
Come on, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for with the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things. It's your very core belief in who God is. Even though I can't see it, He's working. My last point, God will position you for victory. God will position you for victory. He says, you see dry bones, I see a vast army. You see desolate places, I see many, many dreams and promises for you. He says, my people, you are His people. And He has a plan for you. And no devil in hell, no person next door, no set of circumstances can come between you and what God has promised for you if you would just speak to those desolate places. His Word brings life. You see bones, He sees a vast army. It doesn't matter how far you're gone, how undone you are today. God wants to put it all back together right now, bone to bone. He wants to join, rejoin what is unjoined with tendons. Where you've lacked energy and passion and muscle power, God wants to put some flesh, some muscle on those bones and give you the power. Where you felt vulnerable and maybe anxious and afraid, God says He wants to cover you with skin. Where you once were without hope, God wants to breathe life. He wants to breathe life. Come, breath. It's time we start to prophesy over some things in our life. As my mom would say, change your tune. I prophesy over your marriages, love, grace, kindness, happiness. I prophesy over your kids, peace, and strength, and love, and joy. I prophesy over your finances, abundance, overflow, generosity, just more. <laughs> what about prophesying over your health, healing, and wholeness is your portion in Jesus' Name. I prophesy over your work, great success, new opportunities, open doors, next level. I prophesy over your walk with God, deep devotion, powerful encounters, miracle moments, because He loves you so much. And so today, church, I hope you've been encouraged to move forward in faith, to speak His Word over every one of your circumstances. If you're in a dry place, I don't know if you're feeling parched. Sometimes a dry place can make you thirsty. There's a spiritual thirst that the Bible speaks about. Well, in John 7, 37, Jesus stood up and He cried out. He didn't just make a suggestion to the guy next door. He stood up and He shouted this. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He stood out in the crowd and He declared it because He wants you to know He's there for you. He will, he will give you what you need on every level. If you thirst, let Him come to you. Go to Him and drink. And maybe your valley today is a dry place because you've never put Jesus at the centre of it all. Maybe you're in a dry place because you've never made Jesus the Lord and Saviour of your life. Maybe you are in a spiritually dry place because you've never trusted God by faith. Well, I want you to know today, I've started by telling you just how much God loves you. He loves you so much. And in this moment, I want you to know that God demonstrated His love by sending His Son, Jesus, to carry your sin, to carry your shame to the cross at Calvary. He carried it to death. He rose again by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if today you would choose to believe in faith that He is who He says He is and He did what He said, did for you, then God promises that you are saved, you are forgiven, you are 
you can live a life of eternity with Him. And so right now today, God wants to encounter you in your dry place. He wants to move you to your destined place. If that's you, if you wanna decide to trust God at His Word, to trust that Jesus Christ is your Saviour, that you wanna turn from your sinful ways and turn your eyes to Jesus and position your heart that He would come in like a flood, that you could be seated in high places with Him. If that's you today and you wanna make this decision, then I'm gonna ask you to say this prayer with me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I wanna thank You for everything that You have done at the cross for me. Lord, today I confess that I have sinned, but today I declare that I choose to follow You. I choose to trust You. By faith, I choose to believe in You and make You Lord and Saviour of my life for the rest of my days. In Jesus' matchless Name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, if you made that decision today, I wanna say congratulations. You made one of the most powerful and important decisions of your life. I wanna redirect you to our website. We've got some awesome material there for you that's gonna help you on your journey. It has been so awesome spending time with you online today. I've really loved every minute of it. And my prayer for you is that as you step out into your tomorrow, as you step out into your circumstance, you will start to speak life. You will live your dream, baby, because God's got great things for you. Thank you for your time. We love you. Have a great week. God bless you as you go. For thine is the King.